Hello Internet and welcome to another tutorial series for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Today we'll be talking about tool qualities, which is a pretty straightforward topic and will probably be a very short video. However, this is necessary as we're going to be talking about crafting in the near future. So in Cataclysm, tools have two uses. One use is that some items can be activated to perform some action. For example, an MP3 player can let you play music and a sewing kit can be activated to use uh, to stitch clothing. Some items have many, many uses. For example, a smartphone can tell you the time, it can be used as a flashlight, play music, or track your calories. There's a lot of stuff it can do. The other thing that tools in this game can do is give you a specific quality of tool for crafting, vehicle work, construction, things like that. For example, a hammer could be used as a weapon, sure, but the main benefit is that you can use it to hammer things. It gives you the hammering quality. A hacksaw is used for cutting metal and it has the metal sawing quality. Now these two uses Uses of tools are not entirely mutually exclusive, most things have multiple functions. That hacksaw, for example, can be used for crafting recipes that require metal sawing, but it can also be used to cut metal bars on windows by activating the tool. And of course, as you play the game, you're going to learn what tools do what and which you're going to need the most for crafting, things like that. But anyway, the focus of today's video is on the latter usage, talking specifically about the qualities that tools provide. Now when you go to craft or construct something, there will often be tool requirements. Sometimes this will be a specific tool. For instance, if I want to forge a weapon, I will most likely need a crucible and a pair of tongs. Other times, however, it will not be a specific tool, but will instead require a tool quality. Continuing to use the forge example, many blacksmithing recipes require you to hammer some metal. Rather than requiring a hammer specifically, it will instead require a hammering quality of, let's say, two. This means that any tool in the game that has the tool quality of hammering two could be used. Now, this is done mainly for two reasons. Firstly, this is just easier on the player because it allows for multiple different tools to fill that requirement. If it was one specific tool, you would have to find that exact thing in order to be able to craft the recipe. But since it requires a tool quality, there are often a dozen or more items in the game with that tool quality, so it allows a lot more freedom for the player. The second reason that we do this is to have levels to our tool qualities. For example, we can say that hammering one is required for simple recipes, so you could use a stone axe, which is simply a rock tied to a stick. However, something like smithing would require much more precision, and so you would need a more advanced hammer to fulfill that need, say a proper pre-cataclysm manufactured hammer. Another example here is bolt turning. A pair of pliers, which are bolt turning one, can be used for many things, but sometimes you will need a proper adjustable wrench, which is bolt turning two, and it has an additional quality called fine bolt turning. You can find a tool's qualities by checking its item entry. You can view an item's entry in two ways. Firstly, if you open your inventory and move your cursor over the item, you can press enter to open the full entry on the left side of the screen. The second way is used the same way. You will highlight the item in your inventory and press the lowercase e key. This will pop up a smaller version of the item entry in the middle of the screen. Tool qualities will usually be listed at the top of this entry and they're really easy to spot. Now, although many tools can be found through looting, you can also craft items Items to get access to these same qualities. It is perfectly fine to craft an item with hammering 2 rather than finding an item with hammering 2. The important thing is that the qualities are the same level. It does not matter if that quality comes from a crafted item or a looted item. The main difference here is that pre-cataclysm manufactured items tend to have higher tier qualities than a lot of the makeshift tools. And then let's touch on that really quickly because some people like to do full in the woods playthroughs and completely ignore looting. I want to be clear, the game is not designed for you to do this. The game expects you to loot and is not built to be a survival simulator for living in the woods. People often complain that they cannot get a certain tool quality by just rubbing two sticks together. And the response to that is, yes, we, we all know that. Uh, some things would simply not be easily obtained in the woods if it could be obtained at all. And no, we don't care if you post a random YouTube video about some guy building a hacksaw out of twigs or some crap. It's just unrealistic. It is unrealistic to expect your random sticks and wood to perform the same as a metal tool that has been designed to saw metal. But anyway, moving on, a lot of people get upset over that. I just wanted to touch on it. Anyway, there are a ton of tool qualities in this game and you really don't need to worry about learning them all. You will figure out which ones you need when you need them. My recommendation is to simply pick up every tool with tool qualities that you find because you never know when you're gonna need them. 
That way, later on in the game, when you finally get around to heavy crafting, you will have most of the things that you need. And then let's talk about toolboxes and containers. If you played the game previously, or if you watched old tutorials, you may have seen people using a toolbox. The toolbox was a simple, singular item that provided quite a lot of tool qualities. However, when 0.f came around, they were changed so that they're not just one item that provides tool qualities, now they are simply a container. So basically now the way it works is that every container item that contains tools will now have those tool qualities. So if I take my valuable wrench, which has a bolt turning quality, and I put it in my duffel bag, that duffel bag will now provide me with that particular tool quality. So now toolboxes and every other container, they inherit those tool qualities from whatever is contained inside of them. So this is good news and bad news. It's bad news in the sense that you can no longer find a toolbox and immediately have all of your tool quality needs met, but it is positive in the sense that that you can now convert literally any container in the game into a toolbox simply by adding tools to it. What this means is that you can throw all of your tools into a duffel bag and then anytime you know that you're going to be needing something with those tool qualities, you can simply grab that duffel bag and take it with you. As opposed to say just simply throwing those tools in your inventory every time and you know going through a pile and finding oh I need this and I need this. Instead you can just put them all in a bag. Now I don't personally do this, I'm still a little old fashioned, I like to pick up my tools manually and simply keep them in my inventory. However, this is obviously a nice little quality of life and yeah, I just wanted to mention it so that people knew that this was an option. Inevitably, you will find that you're lacking a tool quality that you need to progress. So what then do you do in that situation? Well, you're going to look into whether or not you can craft something that will fulfill that need. The best way, in my opinion, to do this is to check the HHG website. Now we've talked about this site a lot in the series and of course there will be a link to it in the description down below. Now on the main page here, you can click qualities which will open a list of all qualities in the game. Once you click the one that you're looking for, it will then open a list of all items in the game that fit your requirements broken down by what tier of the quality they are. You can browse this list and select something. This will open the item entry and at the bottom of that screen will have a crafting recipe if that item is craftable. This will also tell you where to get the recipe, the skill requirements, everything that you're going to need to know. Alternatively, if you don't want to go to a website, you can check the in-game crafting menu to see if you can craft anything with that quality. Quality. You will open the crafting menu by pressing the ampersand key and then press forward slash to open the search bar. If you type a lowercase q and then a colon followed by the quality, you will be able to search for all items that you could craft with that quality. This information is displayed in this search bar section, so just read and look at the example here and, and mimic what it shows. Now this will only work for recipes that your character currently knows, and I don't think you can search for a specific tier, just the quality in general. So in other words, you could not search for uh, hammering one, you would have to just search for hammering, or at least I think that's how it works. So in the end, you have to make sure that you read the item's information to, to verify that it fits your requirements. And sometimes, unfortunately, crafting is the only route you can take, and sometimes the thing you want to make is going to require a lot of work. For example, I've had previous games where I needed a hacksaw. This was uh, back when you really needed metal sawing to do vehicle work. And I couldn't find one in the world, and so I decided to craft one myself. Well, fun fact, in order to craft a hacksaw, I had to build a forge, a charcoal kiln, make a crucible, tongs, all the forge tools I need, so on and so forth. It took absolutely an eternity, but it did, in the end, give me the tool that I wanted. If you're trying to specifically target a tool, you can also look it up on the HHG website to see where it spawns. Mostly though, the good tools appear in garages and hardware stores, just use common sense on where you think they would appear. Additionally, junk drawers in most houses will commonly contain screwdrivers and hammers, both of which are used in many recipes. Other than that, it really is just RNG, all you can do is target higher value locations as we just mentioned. Anyway, back to talking about tool qualities as a concept, there are two that function differently that I want to talk about. Now, most of the tools that appear in the game, as we've discussed, have tiers to them. Usually this is level 1 through level 3, uh, a hammer has hammering 3, a stone axe has hammering 1. However, we have two tool qualities that are jacking and lifting that function completely differently and people are often confused about how they work. The jacking quality is for jacking up a vehicle and is used primarily for changing tires just like in real life. This is the act of using the tool to physically jack the car up off the ground. 
Now we also have lifting. Lifting is not used to jack a car, but is instead used to lift heavy objects. You would use a lifting tool to lift the engine out of a car, for instance. Now people often confuse jacking and lifting, but just think of them as I just described and you're going to eventually retain that information. Lifting currently has four levels, one, two, seven, and 40. Don't ask me why they're like that, I have no idea. For most engines, lifting one is enough to remove it from the vehicle. Storage batteries are the other thing that you will frequently need lifting for, and they also require lifting one for the most part. It's also worth noting that anything you need lifting for will also have a strength requirement, so if you're strong enough, you can ignore the lifting requirement. For example, removing a scooter's engine, well, it's small enough that you can probably just lift it with your hands, provided that you're an average strength character. Jacking tools also have a variety of levels, however, the jacking requirement to lift a vehicle is actually based on that vehicle's weight. So for example, uh, I think it's every 1100 pounds, which is around 500 kilos. I think that's the number anyway. It, it makes sense to have them be round numbers like that. But anyway, for whatever number of weight units, you'll need one jacking quality. So for an 1800 pound vehicle, for example, it would be a jacking quality of two. And this will be reflected in whatever you're looking at. So if you're looking at your vehicle and it says it's a jacking quality of three, it is automatically doing that math behind the scenes. So whatever requirement is displayed is the requirement that you need you don't have to worry about doing math. So those two qualities work completely different from the other qualities and are often a point of confusion for new players. There may be other strange qualities that I'm unfamiliar with, but if there are, you know, they never really come up, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And if I did miss something, someone leave me a comment and maybe we'll talk about it in the future. Coming in here with an addendum, before we wrap, I did want to say that tool qualities are not always exclusive to items. They can also be provided by furniture or terrain, though it is much less common than finding them attached to items. Vehicle parts are another one that provide a lot of qualities, and in fact, some qualities are only found on vehicle parts such as the lifting quality. Regardless of the source though, qualities will always work the same way. Being in proximity to whatever the thing is will provide that quality and fulfill the requirements for whatever you needed it for. Some Examples here would be a furniture item that is called the Beverly Shears. Now this does provide you with the metal sawing quality as it can be used to cut metal even when it doesn't have power. You can give it a Google if you want, they're an interesting tool that I had never heard of until they were added to the game. Now most furniture tools that you will find in the game like lathes or planers cannot actually be used because they require power and we currently don't have any way of using them. We don't have power grids at the moment, although that is something that's currently being worked on. However, there are a few, like the Beverly Shears, that can be used without power. And then just to touch on vehicle parts, there actually are quite a few that can provide you with some qualities. Vehicles are the only way in the game at the moment to really have any sort of powered equipment, and as such you can find or make a variety of parts to put in your vehicle that provide qualities. Again, the easiest example here would be the lifting quality. In order to lift things, you will need to find or make a crane-type vehicle part and Put it on a small cart or in your vehicle to lift heavy objects. I personally tend to make the telescopic cantilever and then install it on a small folding cart. That way I can take it with me in my car or move it around when I need to lift an engine or a storage battery. Anyway, whatever, this is not a comprehensive guide on those parts. I just needed to mention these things since it does involve tool qualities. And before we wrap here, I do want to mention that this video has mostly talked about specific tool qualities that are high value. I haven't really talked about these simple qualities that are everywhere in the game. For instance, boiling is a quality that is required to boil water, but since it appears on pots and tin cans and pretty much everywhere in the game, it's not really worth talking about. And with that, internet, I think we've covered tool qualities well enough. If I missed anything, please do drop it in my comments, and of course, feel free to ask questions related to qualities if you've got them. Thank you so much for watching. Hit me with a thumbs up if you liked the video, and I, of course, will be back with more in the future, so I'll see you next time.